Okay, so section 2.3, part B, slope, intercept, form, and graphing. Okay, so you guys should have already written this out because we had enough time to do that. The slope, intercept, form is y equals to mx plus b. Um, now, the letter m is for slope. The letter b is for y-intercept. Okay, y-intercept means that's where the, the number, whatever number is there, crosses the y-axis. Okay, so wherever the y-axis is, uh, if it said a plus 5 at the end, you're going to go up to 5 on the y-axis and put a dot there. If it said minus 3 at the end, you're going to go down 3 units and put a dot at negative 3 on the y-axis. Okay, now that's the formula you're supposed to know, y equals mx plus b, based on slope and y-intercept. But I've always had students tell me like, okay, I know how to solve for y, but I have a hard time graphing it. How do I know where to start? And I said, well, it's easy. It is when I teach it in math one. B, just think of it as begin. M is where you move after that. Begin here, then move based on your M value. Okay, now I do want to make one thing clear. Your slope does not include the X. So if this was like 3x, if I say, what's the slope? You tell me 3. Don't say 3x. The x is just like a variable that's next to the slope. Um, any number that has the x next to it in this form is your slope. If there's a number without the x, that's your y-intercept. Okay? So we'll get into that in more detail right now. But remember, b is for begin. M is for move, their actual definitions are y-intercept and slope respectively, okay? So, let's go ahead and do, we're going to do two examples and that's it. Because these two examples are going to cover everything on your homework. I just kind of, I made them a little bit more um, progressive as we did it. So give me a second here. All right. So we're going to write the equation in slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals to mx plus b. y equals, right? That means that they solve for y. So I put that right here in blue, right, under the instructions. Write the equation in slope-intercept form. In other words, solve for y. So we're going to do two of these, okay? First one, x minus 6y equals to 18. Now, there's, there's a reason why I picked both of these examples, because they're they lead to some interesting ways that the numbers are shown. So I want to make sure you guys understand that. The other ones from the homework, they're pretty straightforward, okay? But these are a little bit weird. So I want to solve for y. So I'm going to want to move the x first, okay? I'm going to move the x out of the way. So this is minus x minus x. Okay, so the x's on the left side, they're just going to kind of cancel out, right? This is gone. So this is negative 6y equals 2. Now, I recommend, you don't have to, but really, like, if you really want to make sure you don't mess up, make sure you do this. Keep your x variable first, and then put your numbers after. Okay? Because that looks more like mx plus b, right? X is the x term first, the number at the end. Now, to get y by itself, I'm going to divide everything by negative 6. So this gets divided by negative 6, so does this, and so the, uh, does this right here. So on the left side, it's just going to be y. Now, negative x divided by negative 6 becomes positive, okay, x over 6. 18 divided by negative 6 is negative 3. Now this is a good answer, there's nothing wrong with this answer, but it doesn't necessarily look like y equals mx plus b. Like there's no whole number or fraction in front of the x, but it is there. So what number is next to the x right now? A 1, okay? So if I want to write it y equals mx plus b, this is what I'm going to do y equals 1 sixth x minus 3. In your homework, the first five problems are going to say, write these in slope-intercept form. So that means you're going to be done right there. You would be finished, okay? So you're just going to solve for y, and you're done, okay? But then after that, there's going to be some questions that say, okay, if you have it in slope-intercept form, can you graph it? 
So that's what we're going to continue. So let's go ahead and graph this now. I want to graph it. So here we go. So I'm going to graph this function. It should be really easy. Um, this equation is the most used linear equation to graph anything, okay? Um, slope intercept form. Most people do not use point slope form. They definitely don't use standard form. Uh, that's the worst one. Um, slope intercept form is by far the easiest one to use, okay? So that's why we're trying to get you guys to get used to writing it like this. Now, I know you guys are, are doing your uh, coordinate plane right now. We have our answer, y equals 1, 6, x minus 3. What I want you guys to, to help me out with is what is my m value and my b value? So what's my m value? 1 over 6. Remember, it's not 1 over 6, x. It's 1 over 6. Okay? What's my y-intercept, my b value? Negative 3. Okay. Remember, I begin at b. And then I move on based on my slope, one sixth. Okay, so remember your b value is on the y axis. It's saying negative three. So I'm going to go to negative three on the y axis, and I'm going to put a circle or a little dot right here. Okay, there it is. There's a little dot at negative three. From that point, I am going to use my slope. I'm going to move according to my slope. Notice my slope is positive. That means I have to go up and to the right. If my slope was negative one-sixth, I'd go down once and then to the right six times. Okay? So my slope is positive. I'm going to go up and to the right. So from that green dot, I'm going to go up one and six times over right here. That's my next dot. And then I'm going to connect the dots, and I'm done. Using a ruler helps if you want nice straight lines, but I mean, it's OK. And that's it. If you can do this, you can do the, all the homework, OK? With the exception of two questions, but we're going to get to those at the end. All right? So um, any questions on this one? So just to kind of recap this thing. We're going to start off with a normal equation. They're going to want us to solve for y, which we did. It's right there, right in the middle. Once you solve for y, eventually there's going to be some questions that say, can you graph it when it's solved for y? So what you're going to want to do is write down your slope and your intercept, and then use that to graph your picture. Okay? So let's try another one. Now, these are both homework problems, okay? Okay. Just that the ones I pick, they don't require you to draw the graph, but I'm just doing it just for practice. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to want to solve for y. So what do I move first? The 3x. So let's subtract 3x on both sides, okay? So minus 3x both sides. Whoops, that's not the right side. Minus 3x. So this will cancel. You get negative 2y equals negative 3x. A student asked me earlier, do I put the plus 0 there? No, you don't have to. I'm showing it to you just so you can see it, but I'm about to erase it, okay? So my next step is to get rid of that negative 2. So let's divide both sides by negative 2. So I get y equal to? 3 over 2x. It's positive because it's a negative divided by a negative, right? So it's a positive answer. All right, I'm done. Like I said, the first five problems, that's all you have to do. You, you write that down and you move on, okay? But then there's going to be some problems that say, okay, here's the equation. Graph it. So let's, let's keep going. So I have my equation. I want to graph it. Give me a second while we draw this out. All 
All right, so look at the equation, y equal to 3 halves x, okay, 3 over 2x. What is my slope? 3 over 2, thank you. What's my y-intercept? 0, it's not there, okay? That means that I get to begin at 0, okay? I get to begin at 0. And then I get to move from that point up 3, 2 over. Remember, I'm moving up because it's a positive answer. So I'm going to put a dot at 0. There it is. And then from that dot, I'm going to move up 3 over 2. So up 3 over 2 right here. Connect the dots, and you're done. Like I said, the homework's relatively easy as long as you can solve for y. Okay, if you can get the y by itself, the rest of it's kind of simple. Um, but always solving for a variable can be tricky sometimes. So, um, you know, just, just be aware of it. But overall, the problems aren't too terrible. Now, we are done with everything you need to know with the exception of this. Two special cases. All right? So... Sometimes you see equations and they don't have two variables. It'll just say like y equals 5 or x equals negative 2 or something like that, okay? Whenever you see y equals to a number, that's a flat horizontal line, okay? It's a flat horizontal line at that number on the y-axis. So if it says y equals 3, I'm going to go to the y-axis, put a, th a dot at the 3, and make a horizontal line. Right now we're going to do that. And then the second equation would be if you see like an x equals 7 or an x equals negative 1, okay? Whenever you see x equals to a number, it's a vertical line at that number on the x-axis, okay? So x equal to a number is a vertical line at that number. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use one graph to show you both, okay? I'm going to use one graph to show you both of these. So I'll put a little red dot right here so you know that the red line is going to be part A and a green dot so you know that the green line is going to be part B. All right, so here we go. Um, it's not choosing this thing. Give me a second. Try again. Here we go. So I'm just drawing this out really quick, and then we'll uh, move on. All right, so for the first one, A, Y equals to 3. I'm going to change to red here. Remember what I told you. Y equals 3 is a horizontal line on the Y axis at the number 3. So I'm going to go to the Y axis, the number 3. I'm going to put a dot. There it is and a horizontal line. And that's it. That's all. That's how you graph that one. Very simple. Okay? But you have to remember that it's a horizontal line at that number. Okay? A lot of people forget. The next one, x equals negative 2 is a vertical line on the x-axis at negative 2. So I'm going to go to negative 2 and put a dot right there. And then just draw a vertical line. And that's it. That's how you do those. So that's what your homework is based on.